Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing the brand new stamp set Out of This World and its coordinating dies and we are also introducing this cool little background builder die called Starry Skies. So let's go ahead and check these all out. First we have this really fun astronaut. She or he is so cute. We've got a sun and then we've got all of the planets. So here is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and of course our beloved Pluto. We also have an awesome rocket ship, a little flame that can come out of the rocket ship, some stars for setting the scene in two different sizes, we also have some smiley faces that are adorable on the planets, and we have them in all different sizes depending on which planet you use. Then these are the little rosy cheeks that go along with the smiles, and I'll be using those later. They're so cute. Now we have Hope Your Birthday Is, and then You Are, and they can both go along with Out of This World. And then we have I Love You Too, Pluto, and then I Love You Too, The Stars, and Back. We also have Shoot for the Stars, It's a Special Day, and Today the World Revolves Around You. I'm going to be using my Copic markers to color in these images, and I'm using some warm grays for his spacesuit just to give it kind of almost like a dirty white feeling, and that's what I really love using warm grays for, and I think it looks really cool on his spacesuit. I'm using some light blues for his helmet. So I've got the BG-10 and that BG-70 to blend it out and it makes it look nice and airy. And then I'm gonna color his or her hair in brown and color his skin too. And then of course some little rosy cheeks. Now I'm gonna have fun coloring these planets and I'm gonna be coloring them the way that Elise did on a card that I'm gonna be creating that's super awesome. But the cool thing is, is that you can just have fun with it. You can either color them in a way that's a little more accurate or just give them cool and crazy colors. Now, for this planet here, I really wanted to have that kind of like pinky brown color, but I didn't have a marker to create it. So I layered pinks over browns and got a really cool kind of planet looking color. And then for a lot of these planets, I'm gonna be coloring them where there's darkness on the outside and then lightness towards the middle. And it's I'm having a lot of fun with it, kind of mixing and matching colors and having fun with my markers and creating really bold, really awesome planets. Next up, I'm gonna be using some greens and blues for Earth and just adding just a little bit of shading kind of around the continents there. So there's kind of a little shading going into the water and it gives it a little something going on. Now for some of these smaller planets, I'm making sure to just use two markers for each little area there just to kind of keep the blending simple. And then here for the larger planet, I've brought in a third marker to really give a nice gradient. And I think making those gradients on the planets is what really makes them look dynamic and give them a lot of nice dimension to them. You can see here that I'm laying down my lightest marker first, then my darkest, then I'm going back in with my medium, and then into the lightest into the middle. And I always put that light color down first because I feel like it wets the paper and it makes it a little bit of easier for me to blend all of those colors together. So here now I'm adding that darker marker around the outside, and then I'm going to make the rings just a little bit darker than the planet. I want them to be the same color area, but just a little bit darker so that the ring really does stand out. Now I've been coloring most of these planets kind of solid, but here for Pluto, I'm gonna actually add some little dots to give it some dimension. And I think that looks really cool on the planets and I can't wait to try it on some of the bigger planets, but those little dots with a darker marker look pretty awesome. I'm using some cool grays for my rocket here because I feel like that really looks like kind of metal in the sky. I don't know why, but those cool grays seem really great for that. And so I'm just blending the colors once again, really nice and simple, and just giving it a lot of dimension here. I'm using an R39 there to add some darkness to that red on the rocket, and I think it really gives it some nice dimension. 
Now that everything's colored, it's time to work with the coordinating dies. You can bend them apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. And then we're just going to line them up with our stamped images so that we can die cut them all. Now there are dies that work for multiple stamps. So you'll see that planet and that planet share the same die and that planet and that planet share the same die. So I'm going to run these all through and then I'll run those other planets with the dies through one more time. And then everything is going to look amazing all die cut. And then I wanted to show you too that that Mercury there right by the sun could also be a really great moon for the earth too. Now next up I'm going to be showing you the new Starry Skies die. So I'm going to be cutting it from some black cardstock and you'll see here that this is meant to line up in the quarters. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. I'm going to line the die in the corner and remove it and you'll see this amazing kind of starry corner that it's creating. Then I'm going to pop out all of those stars there and those are actually great confetti for shakers and things like that too. Now I'm going to take my die again and line it up in the other corner and you can see that the stars are starting to fill the sky. Now I've gone ahead and lined them up in all four corners and this is creating a really amazing starry background that you can do with just one small little die. Now in this case I did all four corners, but you can also just do two. So here's five and a half by four and a quarter, but I'm gonna make it a tall card, and I'm just gonna cut out the top two corners. And that's a really cool look too. So you can really mix and match and make this one your own. Now one of my favorite parts of this die set is this little shooting star. So I'm gonna line that up right in the middle of my card here, and you're gonna see that it's gonna die cut out the star, but then cut these stitched lines for the shooting star. And I think that is such an amazing look. I just love it. And here I've layered some white paper behind and you can see how bold and cool that is. It looks really cool with glitter paper behind it too. And then here is one more look at that amazing little shooting star and that great stitch detail. Next up, I'm gonna create a birthday card with this set and I need some party hats for that. So I'm using the new hang in there and the new meow you're doing. And I'm gonna stamp out a bunch of party hats that I'm gonna color and die cut so that they're ready for my planets. Next, I'm going to add smiley faces to all the planets, and there's three different sizes of smiley faces depending on what size of planet you're using. So I'm going to stamp those in all of the planets, and then I'm going to work with the rosy cheeks. So I'm using Wild Rose ink, and I'm stamping those two little rosy cheeks on either side of all of the smiles, and it gives such a cute look to these planets. Next up, I'm going to add these little party hats to all those planets, and they are ready to be put on a card. One last little detail is taking a white gel pen and adding a little dot to the middle of all of those little rosy cheeks. It really makes them stand out and it looks really, really cool. So here I am using some watercolor wishes paper in this gorgeous purple color, which makes a really cool sky for these planets. And I'm gonna be creating a standard size card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And to coordinate with that background, I'm gonna use one of my sentiment banners dies here to cut some of the coordinating yellowy orange paper and stamp hope your birthday is out of this world on there. I'm gonna pop that up with some foam adhesive and add foam adhesive to all of my other planets too. Then I'm gonna place them just like Elise did. I'm recreating Elise, Elise's amazing card for this. And then now I've actually used my starry backdrop die and I've die cut it from black cardstock and I'm gonna use all those little stars to decorate my card. So I'm adding a little drop of glue behind each one and then I'm laying them in place to kind of fill in my sky and add some stars to add some interest. And this card turned out so cute. It just makes me smile with all of those cute little smiling planets. Now next up I am going to create a galaxy sky and so I've taken a piece of watercolor cardstock and I'm taping it down using blue painters tape to just a cheap plastic clipboard because I want to keep it nice and flat while I add a bunch of watercolor to it. So I've taken my paintbrush, dipped it in some water, and then dipped it in some watercolor paints here. And I'm going to paint on sort of messy, ugly clouds everywhere. And I'm going to stay in the color palette of kind of blues, pinks, and purples with this. And so I'm dipping my paintbrush in water again, and now I'm going to pick up some purple watercolor and add that on. And you kind of want to keep this really messy and really ugly. It seems like the messier the better. So I'm just going around and kind of having fun with it and using it kind of as a way to relax. I think I could make these all day. Day. There's so much fun to do. So now you can see I'm kind of going back and forth between the purples and blues and in some places I'm adding a lot of water for a lighter color and in other places I'm adding barely any water to have a really nice bold color. And I'm making sure to create these messy clouds and then make sure to have them kind of overlap but with no sharp edges. So I'm going to keep kind of filling in my area and creating this kind of messy collage of colors.
Now once I have this paper pretty much covered in color, I'm going to get out my heat tool and dry this. You could let it air dry too, but I'm not patient enough for that. So I took out my heat tool and made sure to dry all of these watercolors so I could kind of maintain what this looks like right here. And then I'm going to go through and start adding color on top of it again to make all of this bolder and kind of layer like blues on top of purples and pinks on top of blues, etc., and kind of go back and forth. So you can see I'm doing the same thing with these kind of messy, ugly clouds of color everywhere, and then dipping my paintbrush either in a lot of water or just a little bit of water, and really just layering it and kind of going crazy with it. Now this is actually the first one of these that I've ever created. I watched a bunch of different videos on YouTube and saw some cool different ways to do it. And I thought this way would be really fun and I ended up loving it. Like all I wanna do now is create galaxy cards because this is so much fun. So you guys definitely have to try this if you haven't yet. So now I've layered a bunch of colors again and I'm gonna dry the whole thing again before I start adding my black. Now adding the black is super scary. When I started doing it, I thought I had ruined the whole thing, but this is what actually makes it into the galaxy. So once again, I've either added just a little bit of water for really bold black or just a little bit of water for kind of a gray. And you want some of the colors peeking out kind of through that grayish black color. And I'm gonna keep layering it until I have black and or gray kind of covered all over this thing. And then I'm gonna dry it with my heat gun again. And you can see as you dry it, that black becomes kind of translucent and you can see all of those pretty colors through it. Now it's time to add the stars. So I am taking a paintbrush and I'm going to dip it in something called Copic Opaque White. It's meant for adding white details to your Copic coloring, but it's kind of like a white paint. White acrylic paint would work really well too. I just happened to not have any and I had this, so I decided to use this, but white acrylic paint would work really well. And so you're going to dip your paintbrush into your paint and then flick your finger along the bristles to create little tiny stars of white paint. And you can see how that white paint is what's making it really look like a galaxy. So I'm going to flick it a ton of times until stars aren't really coming off of it anymore and then I'll dip it into my white paint again and keep adding stars. And I actually did this for quite a long while because I wanted there to be a ton of stars in the sky. Then when I was all done flicking it, I actually took my paintbrush and dipped it in the paint again and then kind of tapped my paintbrush to my galaxy just to create some bolder stars all the way around and that kind of finished it up there. I let everything dry and then I'm going to remove that painter's tape and now I've got this awesome sky. I'm going to die cut it with a five and a half by four and a quarter inch stitch rectangle and I kind of lined it up with my favorite part of the galaxy that I created and I love how this looks. It is so cool and it's so much fun to make. I just love it. I'm telling you, galaxy cards, I'm going to make them all the time. So now I'm gonna take that Starry Skies die and die cut that from two of the corners just to add some kind of cool and extra dimension there. Now I wanted those to kind of connect, so I'm gonna take the die and line it up with the middle there and die cut some more stars in the middle so you can see there to make kind of a nice continuous starry sky. Now here's another dotted rectangle I've cut from the same size there of white cardstock and I stamped the Today the World Revolves Around You in it. And then now I'm adding a ton of strong tape to my watercolor background because it was kind of bending a little bit so I needed some strong tape to really hold it in place. So I'm going to layer the sentiment on the bottom part of my card base here and then my starry sky along the top. And because of that strong tape it's going to hold nice and well and really be straight on my card. Now here I am doing a layout completely inspired by a card by Elena. Elena and Elise were so awesome to let me recreate their cards today. And so I've created this same layout layering all of my planets around. And then I'm having my astronaut hold a little flag that's actually from Elfie Selfie. And all I did was cut, create a little black line so that the line extended all the way down to his hand. Then I'm taking my white gel pen and adding a bunch of little white details. Elise and Elena always do this and Nicole does too and it looks so cool so I decided to try it too and I really like how the white dots on the planets go with the white stars in the sky. And now after adding a bunch of foam tape under all of those planets you can see how cool this card is and that background makes a perfect backdrop for these brightly colored planets. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and that you're going to be creating some cool galaxy backgrounds and fun cards with Out of This World, and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with it. So thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have the most amazing day. Bye!